Alavala here to go Ezra Talamahina ne, Hane had a tool of the Valatala Galatai Moem Raho ne, for more to Talamahimutu had a tool. Go Aho in the Afi, Ahumafua, Ahua, ye you light a UF and my hunger full of far. Go for more in your way, Kehe for Holanga Pacific Milestone Fisheries Surveillance Treaty. Go a Tokaki Lotto He for Holanga ne, Eto Mavihanga, Ke Kofalataha, Eto Motu He at Pacifica, Ke Tokwatu Gelotolu, Guanaka Fai. Fakataanga ke fusika ke he tau valatahi ke kehe, moi tau mavehianga ke hokotaki alo tolu, si pihia ke he tau fakaholoanga fusika fakahanoa ke he tau valatahi. Koe mavehianga nai he tau motu ke he kehe kua tau isi mai he whamolianga a Niue Treaty, ne whamoli he tau tūtaki he FFA he tau tahea whihive seo hivang flumaua. Ke kau whalataha i tau tūtaki ki lalo hifo he FFA, ke he tau matawara whono mo i tau nga hua a kua whamori i ai. Ne whamatale i lilifu ko Billy Graham tālangi kua fia fia lahi a ia, ke lafiatu a e whamori anga ke latai mo i whifili anga he whono i ikipule, ke la lafiatu a niwe ke he whamori anga nei. Mua atu ke tau mawehe anga a nei kua tālanga ke he whakaholo anga kua whaingo aki. Ha, e motu ko niwe he tau tahe a whihiwe seo mo hiva ngon fulmaua. Ko e whamatalaanga nei he li lifu i ki pule ko Billy Graham tālangi ke he whanoanga i toke lau. Ko e faulua motu ko e whamoli e mawehianga nei ko Cook Islands, FSM, Nauru, Palau, PNG, Marshall Island, Samoa, Motuvalu. Ko e tau hata ki anga he whahi ngā hua leo leo ke he tangata whanawhana he motu ke mai longa i tau lewe ki anga ka eke kua watu ke takawhanga. I loa mai kua whai tangata ne kua ngalo ke he wao he oki oki whahatapu kua mwale ka e nga kai whai ole langmatai ke he whahi ngā hua leo leo. Ne pehema i takitaki leo leo kua manako alo tolu ke langmatai atu ka eke kua whai tangata ka ngalo. Ka eke kua mai mai nā hā kua lauia ke he tau mata ngā hua whana whana he tau lupe hā kua nā kai lā hafangi e manga hala whana lupe kua alata he tau tangata ke whifili e mena kua tonu ke nā kai anga hala ke he tau mata whaul whono ne kua muitua ki ai. Mai longa whakalahi he whahe ngā hua e ngā hua kua lango ki ai ke kiskise atu moe hā taki atu ke he tau tangata. Ka eke kua lata po ke moua foki i tau talahawanga a mai he whahi takataka i motu. Kua lata ke hafangi foki taha manga hala whana whana, ma eke ke tuku atu e taha ole ke whono i gipule ke whai whifili anga ki ai. Ka koe mga hunei, whakadu mauni ke whakamunatu ke he teo tangata whana whana, nga kai la hafangi e manga hala whana lupe, a moe kua lata ke whrausi e matanga hua ia ato hafangi pa uaki e mga ho ke whanai e lupe. And a very good afternoon. Here's the news read by Ezra Talamahina. Firstly, our local news. On Tuesday, 2nd of July 2014, Australia, Niue and the Solomon Islands have signed on to the Pacific's Milestone Fisheries Surveillance Treaty, singling a new push of endorsement for regional solidarity against illegal, unreported and, and unregulated fishing. The multilateral NTSA stems from the new treaty endorsed by FFA, uh, all FFA members, I'm sorry, uh, countries in 1992. The NTSA covers the flexible cooperation in a broad range of activities and the sharing of fisheries data and intelligence for fisheries and broader law enforcement purposes. The new Natural Resources Minister, Honourable Billy Graham Talangi, said he is proud to add his signature enacting the decision of his cabinet to bring new way into the subsidiary agreement, especially one which builds on the importance treaty for fisheries named after uh, my country in 1992. The multilateral NTSA commits countries to strengthen cooperation between each other in their surveillance efforts against IUU fishing in the waters. 
Australia, Niue and Solomon Islands now join the Cook Islands, FSM, Nauru, Palau, PNG, Marshall Islands, Samoa and Tuvalu as the current signatories to the NTSA. Niue police are urging firearm users to be mindful when out hunting following a report of a person lost out in the bush over the weekend. Although Niue police were not contacted to assist with a search, the individual was found unharmed. But it is alleged that perhaps the reluctance of people to request help was because of some of the season's shooting involvement. Sorry, I'll read that again. Uh, it is alleged that perhaps the reluctance of people to request help and because of some out-of-season shooting involvement. Niue police said they are prepared to assist with search parties, but if they are found to be practicing illegal shooting, they are required by law to reprimand people accordingly. However, if there is a genuine reason or a reasonable number of bird stock at this time of the year, they would be able to seek cabinet approval to open up the shooting season, but uh, that will need to be done in collaboration with the Environment Department. As it stands, it is not pigeon shooting season, and a warning has been issued to cease such activities until the proper seasons open. And here's our news from around the region. Pacific Fisheries Ministers uh, meeting in Tokelau this week have agreed to explore the possibility of separating fishings or fisheries issues from the current Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA, negotiations with the European Union. And uh, they have gone a step further to seek, to seek an EPA without the fisheries chapter reveal the outcome statement released uh, this afternoon. The statement said that uh, the Pacific Islands Forum Fisheries Agency, the FFA, and fisheries officials and where appropriate ministers need to fully engage in any discussions of of fisheries issued with the EU. They maintain the strong position that there should be no compromise on the red line fisheries issues. The key contentions issues for the Pacific ACP countries are the issue of development cooperation provisions, export taxes, infant industry, standstill clause, the most favoured nation provisions, the non-execution clause, taxation and government issues, market access and rules of origin for fisheries products. Fisheries ministers have maintained these issues are not negotiable. Pacific Parliament should address gender issues and should take the lead in not only encouraging women to become parliamentarians but to integrate local culture into their parliamentary systems. This was a view of the Cook Islands Parliamentary Speaker, Honourable Nikki Rattle, when she addressed the delegations of the 45 presiding officers in Clark Conference, POCC, members in Samoa Parliaments today. The only woman speaker, she was the first presenter and emphasised the need for women to have a choice in politics. She also said, although there are many disparities or gaps between men and women, there should be an equal balance of gender representatives in Parliament. The Tongan Parliament, uh, during its budgetary debate last month, increased the domestic travel allowances for the Speaker, Member of Parliament and the staff by an unspecified amount. A note from Lisi Ate Akolo, Chairman of the House Standing Committee on Finance, informed the House that the increase was to match the travel allowances of the civil servants. The previous travel allowance of members and staff of the House covered only their accommodation. The new travel allowance for the House will include all essential expenses needed to enable the Speaker, members and the staff to carry out their duties while travelling. On top of all these expenses, the House also agreed for an additional 10% because of their status as members and staff of the Tongan Legislative Assembly. The annual National Constituencies Tour by Members of Parliament runs from 7th to the 18th of July. Most members of Parliament are expected to be in Vavau for the King's birthday celebration on 4th of July. 
The Fiji First political party will begin its election campaign next week. Party General Secretary Ayaz Sayad Kayum confirmed it to FBC News that party leader Varik Frank Banimarama will lead the campaigning. In the meantime, Sayad Kayum says the party is still working on finalising its candidates. A party pocket meeting was held early this week with the party leader at the head office in Suva to discuss campaign strategies. Party volunteer uh, uh, Benjamin Koini Baravi uh, told FBC News the party has over 2,000 volunteers who will assist in the campaign. Kiribati is set to host a climate change meeting next week of Atoll Nations to consolidate their stands as frontline and most vulnerable states in the face of climate change, according to a report from Office of the President in Tarawa. From these front frontline nations, Kiribati, Maldives, Marshall Islands and Tuvalu, climate change is an issue of security and survival. They are meeting under an affiliation known as the Coalition of Atoll Nations on Climate Change. President of Kiribati, Anoti Tong, says a united stance as Atoll Nations in the global arena will gain traction and redirect international focus to the plight facing low-lying Atoll states. The end of next year will see the Kyoto Protocol come to its end and whether a new agreement is achieved or not. Practical and innovative solutions need to be put in motion to ensure the continued existence of nations like Kiribati. And finally, economies across the Pacific region will face rising challenges in generating needed jobs for their rapidly growing working age population in coming years, according to the Asian Development Bank's ADB, latest Pacific Economic Monitor launched today. The Pacific's working age population is projected to increase from its current 6.6 million to 9.6 million by 2030. However, only about a third of new workforce entrants in the region can expect to find wage employment if recent years' job creation trends do not improve. This issue of the Monitor features five policy briefs that explores the Pacific's job creation challenges with contributions from researchers from the World Bank, the International Labour Organization and the East-West Centre's Pacific Island Development Programme. The briefs highlight important characteristics of labour markets across the diverse economies of the region and discuss policy options for creating improved employment opportunities in the region. The Monitor also provides an update on regional economic trends, reporting a slightly weaker growth outlook for the Pacific region due to the impacts of flooding in the Solomon Islands and slower-than-expected credit and consumption growth in Timor-Lisi. And those are our news for today.